Hey kids, welcome to Unit 2, Lesson 3, Parameterized Constructors, Exercise Number 7. We have a choose your own adventure. I love my electronics, so I'm going to change it up again, and I'm going to do D, Electronics. Let's see what we have to do. An electronics store sells a variety of new and used electronics. We're going to write a parameterized constructor in the electronic class to assign specific values to the name, price, and is refurbished instance variables. Then we're going to write a parameterized constructor in the electronic class to assign specific values to the name and price instance variables and a default value to the is refurbished. Well, then in a store render Java, we're going to instantiate an electronic object using each parameterized constructor. And then we're going to print a constructor and the values assigned to the instance variable for the electronic object. Ooh, sounds like a lot. Let's take a look at the code. Not much here in our main method. In electronics, we have three instance variables, a name, a price, and is refurbished. We have a no argument constructor right here, just like the class, it's called electronic. Its default is unknown, the price $50.99, and is it refurbished returns false. Those are my defaults. Now I have to write a parameterized one for all three instance variables, and then one for two and a default value for is refurbished. Then we have a get method for the get name, a get method for the get price, and a get method for get is refurbished. Again, we're gonna learn about these in a couple lessons. Right now, all we need to know is this is how we get access to our instance variables outside of the class. Let's head up to the top and start writing some code. Before we get started, remember a constructor is how we create an object, the blueprint for it. We've been using this all through the class. In the last lesson we did no argument constructors. In that one, if you remember the paint method, we called that constructor an awful lot. It started a painter at zero, zero facing east with no paint. But what if we wanted to move that painter to a specific spot? Sure, it'd be helpful if we could do that, wouldn't it be? Well, that's what a parameterized constructor can do. We could enter values for the X, Y location, the direction it faces, and the amount of paint. How do we do that? First, we create some parameters to pass along, and then we're going to assign those parameters to our instance variable. It's really that easy. Let's take it one step at a time. The first thing we need is our accessor method. We want this to be a public and the same name as the class electronic. We're going to do some parentheses and some curly cues. Well, this time we're going to put some information inside the parentheses. Our variables from above name is a string price is a double and is refurbished is a Boolean. So we're going to need those same data types to pass along. We're going to need a string. And we're going to call this new name. In between each, we put a comma. The next is price. That is a double. I'm going to call this a new price. And then finally, our refurbished is a Boolean. So we go Boolean and then we'll do refurbished status. Just like when we passed along a color, we had to specify the correct argument to pass through. This constructor signature is the same thing. We're going to need to pass a string, a double, and a Boolean in that order when we call it. We're not done yet. Once we pass one of these arguments, where are we going to store it? We want to assign it to the private instance variables. Just like above, we're going to say name equal, and we're just going to take the name we're passing along, new name, semicolon, same thing with price, it's price equal new price, 
comma, and then is refurbished is equal to refurbished status. And we're definitely going to check this spelling here. Oh, that looks right. Price looks right. Name looks right. We should comment this out. End of three parameter constructor. Don't only have to put a comment up there. We already have it right here. So this is our three parameter constructor. Number two, we have to write a two parameter. Let's go ahead and take care of that. I'm gonna come down here. We're gonna follow the same steps. Access modifier is going to be public. Same name as the class. We're gonna put some parentheses and some curly cues. This is our end of two parameter constructor. This one, we're gonna do roughly the same thing. We're gonna do a string, it's gonna be a new name, and our double is gonna be new price. Inside here, much like above, we're gonna assign name to equal the new name we're passing along. And for the price, we're gonna do the same thing, our new price. But, for our is refurbished, we're just gonna set that to false. Now when I pass along two parameters, I'll still get three different things. One of them is just gonna be a default. As long as everything is spelled right here, I think it's time to move on to number three and instantiate our electronic object with parameterized constructors. Let's head over there. Now we have to print these off, but first we have to create some objects. So this is going to be a default object. And we've done this a million times. It's going to be from the electronic class. We'll call this basic this is going to equal a new, and we're going to call our no argument constructor. That's the first. Let's go ahead and do our three parameter object still from the electronic class. We're going to call this one a phone because we have to pass along a couple of things. This is going to equal a new electronic. Don't forget your semicolon on this. This time we have to pass along a string and a phone is a cell phone. The price, I like my cheap phone, so I wouldn't get anything too expensive, $99.99. And is it refurbished? I'd probably get a refurbished phone, kid, so we'll put true. That is our three parameters we're gonna pass along. Let's do our two parameter object. Give ourselves a little room here. Same thing, electronic. Let's do a, a laptop. This is a new electronic. Again, we have our parentheses and semicolon. This time, we're going to call our two parameter constructor. Remember, the third one is a default. So this one is going to be a laptop. And the price will make it $999.99. That creates our objects. Let's go ahead and print them off. So we need to print the constructors. Remember, we have this little bit of code here that we're just going to copy and paste in. We're not going to worry too much about it because it is not on the test. We are now going to do the second one. We'll start with the phone. We already know that's a basic one and how that works. After that, we need to print off. So let's do a print the values for the phone. And in between this, we should give ourselves a little room here. We'll do a system.out.println. Don't forget your 
quotes, put a bunch of dashes so we can see where we're at. Then for the values, we have to write our git method. Let's do a system.out.println. We are going to say name. Then we're going to concatenate and the object dot modifier. What method do we want to call? We want to call the get name method. So that's going to be get name, just like the method is called. Got to do this two more times. System dot out dot print ln. Then we're going to do price and then concatenate again. We are going to call the get price method. Finally, we need to know if it's refurbished. And that is going to say is refurbished question mark. Concatenate again. We are from the phone object and we are calling the get is refurbished method. That is definitely not spelled right. Woo, well, that is a lot of typing. And we should probably check and see if our code has any errors right now. Let's go ahead and hit run and see if the program works. Oh, we got an error. Looks like I forgot a semicolon on line 28. So let's go down here. Line 28 did forget a semicolon. Let's put one of those in there. Check the spelling. Looks pretty good. On line 39, check the spelling. It is spelled wrong. Let's spell it right. E-L-E-C. Tronic. Now that looks like it is spelled right. Let's clear our console, head back over to the main method. Let's hit run. I think my program is going to work. Oh no, we got another error. I assume my get refurbished is misspelled here. Let's go back to our get method. Get is refurbished. Let's copy that. Come back here. Control V. More poor spelling from Mr. Rhodes. That looks like all of our errors. Let's clear. Third time's always a charm. Let's hit run. And it looks like everything's printing off now. That's the first one. We just need to do the same thing to the second one. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this here. It'd be easier to change our object than try to respell again. Let's do a system.out.println. Quotes. Put some lines in between. This is going to print the values for the laptop. Copy that in. It is now a laptop object. So we need to change our object on each one of these. And we're still calling the same get method. So now I should get my phone object to print off and I should get my laptop object to print off. Let's clear our console, go ahead and hit run. And I got my constructors to print off, my cell phone object and my laptop object. My three parameters I entered, I'll print it off. My two parameters printed and it defaulted to is refurbished as false. I think this is a pretty important concept. There's a couple key takeaways from this lesson. First is going to be what the anatomy is of a parameterized constructor. It's a lot like a no argument. We have our accessor method set as public. Our constructor name has to be the same as the class. We have our parentheses. This time inside the parentheses, we now are putting formal parameters, which are the value to be passed in the constructor. Just like the paint method 
when we added a parameter to make it more flexible, we can do the same thing to our constructor. By adding different attributes, we can create different objects. These are also often referred to as local variables. Our instance variables are global, meaning they're accessed throughout the class, but our local variables are contained within that object. So whenever we create a new object from a different constructor, they're getting their own set of variables declared. Next, we learned how to call a parameterized constructor. We have to specify the same values as we declared in the constructor. These are called actual parameters, and these are the values we're actually formally passing along. Remember, these directly relate to these instance variables within the constructor. One final thing, I didn't talk about it in this video, but whatever these attributes we are assigning, this is going to be referred to the state of the object. So whatever we pass along, that's its state. Something to keep in mind as we move forward. Hopefully this video helped you understand parameterized constructors a little better. As always, kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.